So here we have the financial statements for Eyes on the Prize Eye Care. Now this is an eye doctor and they just purchased the business last year. So the financials again are through 831-21, but the business was purchased in early 2020. So keep that in mind as we go through the balance sheet because you'll see some things that you probably won't see on a lot of books. So this is a single member LLC. They're not taxed as an S corporation. They're a cash basis taxpayer. So they don't pay income tax until they get money either from the customers or from the insurance companies. So they don't keep track of an AR on their balance sheet and they don't worry about reconciling specific customer payments. They're just worried about cash in the door. They do have an accounts receivable, but that's all managed on the back end with their POS system and it's not used for financial statement purposes. So let's kind of go down the balance sheet and see what we can find out. So first up, there are the two checking accounts. And there's an operating account that they use most frequently for all business activity. And then just another TD checking account that just kind of has a spare $2,000 in it. So total bank account balance is $170,000, which looks pretty, pretty awesome. If we keep going down, they do keep inventory on hand. So they're an eye doctor's office, but they also have um, inventory on hand because they have frames and contacts and glasses on hand that after you get your eye exam, then you buy some product from them. So we have inventory on hand for eyes on the prize of $36,000. And something of note, when the business was purchased in early 2020, as a part of the purchase of the business was purchases of assets. So they purchased machinery and equipment, some furniture, which you'll see down here, some intangible assets, which we'll talk about. And then obviously they purchased some inventory from the old owner. So some of this inventory wasn't just paid for directly by the new owner. It was brought in from the old owner. So that's our inventory number. Once we verify that, then we can go down to the fixed assets. I'll zoom in a little bit on the fixed assets. So you'll see that $11,000 of fixed assets were purchased originally, but we've only taken depreciation of 1800. So we still have $9,330 of expense to recognize as depreciation in a future year, or in this case, future years, because we're going to break it out over a seven year period. Machinery and equipment was also purchased during the business purchase, but we were able to fully expense that in the first year it was purchased because of 179 depreciation. So that's why it looks like there's actually no value to the machinery and equipment that's on hand when there actually is value. Um, and it's still being used. So in total, the fixed assets that they have on their balance sheet are worth 9,330. And then we'll scroll down and we have some assets that we don't always see on everyone's books. So we have intercompany. So that means that there's another business involved and this business paid for 4,493 of expenses for the other business. So eyes on the prize put out $4,493 of expenses for another entity. So to keep track of what the other entity owes, eyes on the prize, we have an intercompany balance. So instead of that expense being recorded on eyes on the prize's books, that expense is recorded on the other company's books and an intercompany balance is created on the balance sheet. And then we'll go down to intangible assets. So when the business was purchased, there's a non-compete agreement worth about $10,000. And then there's a goodwill, which just means that all the customer loyalty that was um, created when the original owner owned the, owned the entity, any other customer relationships and vendor relationships, those are all part of goodwill. And this is kind of the arbitrary multiple that you put on a business. So you can say, hey, I'm buying inventory worth 30,000 and equipment worth 10,000, but I'm gonna pay you a total of 100,000 for this business. And the difference is basically goodwill. And that has to be amortized over 15 years. That's why only $1,300 of the amortization expense has been recorded in 2020 because we have to separate that over a 15 year period. So the intangible assets that are sitting on the books are worth 91,706. And if any patents were purchased, this is also where they would show up. And then lastly in the assets is a security deposit. So they rent a space, and as part of their rent, they had to put down a $6,000 security deposit. And this is not an expense, it's an asset because in theory, that money will come back to you at a certain point. Once you leave that space that you rent, 
even if it's for 10, 15, 20 years, in theory, you should still get back the $6,000 security deposit. So that's not, that's why it's not an expense immediately as you pay. And that gives us total assets of 318, almost $319,000. That's cash. That's inventory. That's fixed assets. That's everything all put together. So then we're going to scroll down and see what kind of liabilities we have. Now we don't have any intercompany balances, which is good, but we do have a couple other long-term liabilities to worry about. So we have a loan to Michael Scott, which was the old owner of the business. So as part of the purchase, we were actually able to finance some of the business with the old owner. So we didn't have to pay him the full amount right away, which is awesome. That's huge for cash flow purposes. We owe some money to Arnold and we also owe some money to Shy Eye. And in the similar situation, these companies either loaned us money or paid for an expense on behalf of Eyes on the Prize. So that's why it's really important to keep track of what you owe to others. Because if Arnold or Shy Eye says, hey, I need my payment, we need to know not only how much we need to pay them, but that we can actually afford to pay them. And then lastly on our long-term liabilities is the bank loan. So this is the other bank loan that I took out in order to have startup money for the business and also to finance a portion of the original purchase. So in total, I owe other people or other entities $262,000. That's a lot of money. But remember our assets are 318,000. So that means we still have positive equity of 55,938 in the business, which is summarized here. So you'll see that the equity is made up of the retained earnings. So amounts that were left in the business as of 1121. The owner put in $300, but took out 485. So that's a net of $185. So total retained earnings, just including those items, not worrying about net income from the current year. Equity is about $4,000. $961. But the business also generated almost $51,000 in 2021. So that amount also gets added to the equity. And that's how we get to our 55,938. So let's jump over to our profit and loss and make sure that this 50, almost 51,000 is actually what we made. So if I look here, it's actually small enough for me to see the entire profit and loss all in one screen. So in fact, my net income is 50,976. And if I scroll up to the top, it starts with sales of $122,000 for that eight month period. And the cost of creating those sales is super, super low because we're doing a lot of eye exams, which don't have a lot of costs. The only real cost that we have is from inventory items. So items that we had to purchase and then go ahead and sell. But if we're not having a lot of cost of goods sold items, honestly, the, the only big expense directly related to these sales or a majority of these sales is the merchant settlement fee. So the amounts that I pay to the processing companies that actually facilitate these payments. So I have a really good gross profit. $111,000 on 122,000 of sales. Now I do have some costs. My monthly overhead is kind of expensive for a company in the medical field. Most companies in the medical field have a pretty high overhead expense. So we have insurance, legal and professional services, payroll that was paid by another entity, royalty fees. This is a franchise, so I owe royalties on Eyes on the Prize's sales. Rent is a huge expense for Eyes on the Prize. You can see that 13,000 over an eight month period. It's pretty significant. So my total, if we run down all these other expenses, utilities, taxes, security, my total expenses for the eight month period, that's about 4,600 in total. And then I'm able to recognize 23,000 of depreciation expense. And that's basically um, from what we saw before with our fixed assets. And this wasn't exactly a cash out of the bank account, but we do get to recognize the expense in 2021. So that's why we're left with net income of $50,000. And we hop over to our cash flow and we see the net income start at the same up here. We purchased more inventory during the year. We also bought things for this other entity. So that's why we have a cash outflow here. 
And then you'll see there's no investing activities with this company, but we do have financing activities. So we paid down the Michael Scott loan by 17,500 during the period. We paid down the due to shy eye loan during the period, but we also took on a new bank loan of $160,000. And then we have our equity. So the difference is this 160,418. And that's because we took on all that new debt. So the cash at the beginning of the year was only $10,000, but now that we have that huge new loan, now our cash balance looks really good with a nice healthy $170,000 in it. And that matches our 170,000 that's on our bank account.